folks. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we've got a terrific uh, webinar for you today, uh, Why Doctors Need You During a Pandemic. So folks, if you are thinking about starting a business, uh, one that you can run from your home or literally from anywhere in the world that has an internet connection, uh, and that's in a field that's gonna be around for a long time to come, uh, healthcare, then you're in the right place. And we have a very special guest today, Dr. Vicki Rackner, who's with us, who's gonna be sharing some of her thoughts about why doctors need you during the uh, pandemic. Those of you who have not been on a one hour webinars, let me tell you who I am, just so you know, I'm the founder and the CEO of American Business Systems. We've been in business 26 years. So if you've never heard of us, shame on you. Where have you been? We've been out there on the internet for 26 years, teaching people how to start their own business helping doctors to collect their revenue. And uh, you can prove that I'm a real person by going to Amazon and looking up one of these books here. Uh, all three of them are out there on Amazon. How to Reprogram Yourself for Success, The New Thriving Medical Practice, and Cash Crunch to Cash Flow. I'm also on the editorial board of a magazine called Billing and Coding Advantage. Uh, over 40,000 subscribers to this, yes, still in print magazine, is mailed out to anybody who's anybody in this industry is uh, a subscriber to that magazine. You'll see my articles in there on a regular basis. I'm also on the advisory board of the Medical Revenue Management Association of America, which is the organization that uh, certifies you with uh, uh, th once you've gone through our online training. And uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about that as I go along here. What we do basically, folks, is have a, a cloud-based uh, billing system with an electronic medical record system built into it, uh, a patient portal, uh, we're our own clearinghouse, uh, so you don't have to worry about anybody third party uh, taking the blame for why your claims didn't go through. We do it all, and we do it all through a cloud-based system. So if you're interested in finding out more about that towards the end of this webinar, I'll be telling you what you should do to find out more, do your due diligence, and a little bit more about it. Meanwhile, you can go to our website, which is absystems.com. If you haven't been there, go there and check us out. So. Uh, our guest today, Dr. Vicki Ragnar, is a fellow of the American College of Surgeons. She's also a published author. There are some of her books illustrated there on this slide. She's also been inter uh, interviewed on a lot of different TV and radio programs and news programs. And she's also a contributor to Physicians uh, Money Digest and the Journal of Medical Practice Management. And she's one of the co-founders of the organization that I told you about earlier, the Medical Revenue Management Association of America. So. With that, let's get her on here live. Dr. Vicki, you still with us out there? I am. Hey, Patrick. Hello, everyone. Hey, welcome from uh, Minnesota. That's right. All 95 degrees of us. Oh, really? Is it that hot up there? Wow. Yeah. It's pretty hot. It I thought it'd be icy cold still, still snowing. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> uh, well, Dr. Vicki, thank you for being with us. Uh, let's tell people a little bit about yourself and uh, why you're associated with us as a, a, you know, American Business Systems uh, and how you got involved with us. That was several years ago, wasn't it? It was, it sure was. So my passion is really helping doctors thrive. And it turns out that doctors need a lot of things in order to thrive. They need a vision, right? They need a bunch of skills because they're not very good at businesses. And what they really need are people to help and support them. And so, for example, they need a solid financial foundation. So I work with financial advisors so they can understand doctors and learn how to talk so doctors can listen. Through that kind of exposure, one day I got a call from this guy um, and he said, you were just the person I've been looking for all my life. And it was Patrick Phillips. That and was me. what he wanted was he wanted the resources to help his licensees be more successful. And since I'm kind of the expert in how to engage doctors, how to talk so doctors will listen and how to inspire them to take action, it has been my honor and pleasure to support ABS and to support their licensees. And one of the reasons that this means so much to me is, well, if you've been out in the world a while, you know that there are some people who talk a good talk, but then there's the real deal. And Patrick Phillips and ABS really are the real deal. 
um, Patrick is always talking with me with more ideas about how the licensees can be more successful. Like this is a passion of his yeah. and he's a, a wonderful person. So Patrick, it's it's been such a delight working with you. Well, the feelings mutual, as you know, I, uh, you, you were just basically accidentally a doctor, weren't you? I was, I was. So I was actually in a graduate program when one day I fainted on my way to the bathroom. I had some internal bleeding. And by the time the doctors got into my belly, about half of my blood volume was there. So I thought this was the end. I was so grateful to wake up. I just knew I was gonna be a doctor, save other people's lives like my own had been saved. And not surprisingly, I did become a surgeon. I went into private practice, primarily being a breast surgeon, helping people with breast cancer. And um, so basically, I'm, if you're on the line thinking about becoming a licensee, I'm your client. So I'm going to tell you how things really work in the world of medicine. For the past two decades, I've been a serial entrepreneur, though. So um, through that experience, I've really gotten some insights about all of the things that doctors don't know. Um, one of my favorite episodes of Shark Tank, which is kind of like my surrogate MBA program, there was a, a doctor who went on to Shark Tank to sell share uh, to sell um, shares in his company, Syndaver. They sold synthetic cadavers. And this is like a billion dollar industry. The, he'd already had millions of dollars in sales. The sharks were all engaged. And I thought, man, this guy's gonna get a five shark deal. But then Mr. Wonderful started asking about the revenue and the profitability. And there the doctor said on national TV, well, I suppose I could be making lots of money, but money is not really that important to me. Making a difference is what's important to me. And with that, four sharks were out. He got a deal with Robert Hershebeck that fell apart in a couple of weeks. And the problem, the problem was not the value, right? This was a great business, a great investment opportunity. The problem was that this doctor who was trying to influence the sharks, they weren't speaking the sharks language, right? So what I do is I help people really understand how doctors are wired, what inspires them to take action, because ABS has clear value. And Patrick, today I'm really excited to explain why these services are needed today in this COVID-19 pandemic. But having the value itself isn't quite enough. It's knowing how to bring this value to doctors and talking so doctors will listen. And one of the things that ABS licensees have access to is this kind of knowledge and skill. How to actually successfully get a doctor to the proverbial table and let doctors know how you can help them alleviate their acute financial pain that they're experiencing. Yeah, that's really what it's all about is uh, why is it that people should be getting involved in our business at all? Uh, if there's not a need out there in the marketplace, then you, you don't have a business. You know, that's why so many people buy into uh, Subway sandwich shops, for example, because everybody has to eat and everybody likes sandwiches. And so uh, they'll invest $100,000 just to open up a uh, Subway. I, I probably wouldn't do that today, right now. <laughs> but there are businesses like ours, of course, that enable people to work from home or anywhere and still engage with uh, uh, clients out there. Let me go back to this slide. I stuck it up there, but I took it away. This one is uh, an article that we just ran across here. Oh, uh, let's see, it's dated May 31st. And you can see it's all about immediate changes needed for physicians to stay in business during the pandemic. Some of them are going out of business, aren't they? They and are. Even yeah. those that work for hospitals, I guess. Right. So. I have so much compassion for all of the people who are facing challenges today. It just breaks my heart to see that there are some businesses that will die. They, they will not go through things. I personally am involved with a number of coaching organizations. As a member, I've, I'm a member of a mastermind. And what I know is that there are businesses that are thriving in today's economy. And why? It's because they're offering a solution to some of the problems that are being posed today. So I will tell you that today, 
it is difficult to be a physician. It's difficult to run a hospital. And let's just think why that might be the case. If we think about the major therapy, therapeutic intervention for COVID-19, it's flattening the curve, right? It's making sure that the demand for healthcare services does not exceed the supply. Patrick, down in Texas, things are not looking good. No, they're not. June right now. <laughs> they are not. Okay, so what do we do to flatten the curve and make sure that we have enough ICU beds for everyone? All of the elective cases have been put on hold. All right, so even something like the treatment of breast cancer, like getting an operation for breast cancer and getting chemotherapy, that's considered to be elective, right? So for three months, every doctor who treated those patients, they've been earning maybe 10 to 20% of what they used to earn. And doctors would say, okay, that's okay. Like we can do this for a couple of months, but you know, we know that when the country's opened again, People are going to come in and they're going to get their elective cases done. I mean, how many, how long does somebody want to live with hip pain? But the reality is, is that even though places are opening up, many patients are frightened to come in. And so physicians, a lot of the high earning physicians that are ideal clients for you, maybe are earning 60% of what they used to do. Wow. And so they, they are in pain and they need help. I was um, at just an amazing <laughs> webinar delivered by the uh, American College of Surgeons. And it was economic survival strategies for surgeons in the COVID world, because there are surgeons who are thinking about filing for bankruptcy. There are physicians who have lost their jobs. Now, is this a permanent thing? No, it's not. I mean, people are always going to need to get their breast cancer operated on, right? People with hip pain are always going to need their hip operations. But we need this stopgap measure to get through until things are opened again. Okay. And so, you know, physicians are like really worried about things. But the, the amazing thing is, is that a lot of these surgeons who are worried about it, they can have like six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars in their accounts receivable. And like, it just doesn't occur to them. Well, maybe I should collect on the money that I'm owed instead right. of worrying about filing for bankruptcy. So there's this gap here. There's this knowledge gap. There's a skills gap. And ABS licensees really have been able to meet doctors where they're at, find out what their pain is, and then help them bridge that gap until they're really back, um, back up to sort of regular production, if you will. Yeah, now you recently uh, wrote a book that's kind of on this topic because <clears throat> most people, if they're like me, before I got into this business at least, I always thought of doctors as being, you know, some of the wealthiest people out there. Uh, and I'm sure some of them still make some pretty good money, of course, surgeons especially. I guess they can earn, uh, what, a half a million dollars a year. But <laughs> this book that you wrote really right. struck, a, right. it really struck a, a, a nerve with a lot of doctors, didn't it? Yeah. Hey, Patrick, how about if we give the people on the line a complimentary digital copy of this book so they can read it and really understand what's going on with doctors and their relationship with money? So, yes, sure. doctors do earn a tremendous income. You know, the average starting salary of a fellowship trained orthopedic surgeon is $500,000. So, you know, they can earn significantly more. What they have a really hard time doing is translating this high earning into true financial freedom. And you know, even doctors who are in private practice, they they make some really bad mistakes. They just when you go out and talk to them, you're going to be amazed at how little they know about running a business. Um, they trust the wrong people. I have a friend whose entire retirement was embezzled by her trusted office manager, and it was gone before she ever suspected things. So um, doctors yeah. can lose money for all sorts of reasons. And my book, The Nine Money Mistakes That Doctors Make, um, is really important today because there's a lot of financial pain doctors cannot afford to be making these mistakes. You know, Warren Buffett has two laws of investing. Number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. 
So yeah. doctors need to be really smart today about money. And it includes the way that cash flows in and out of their practice. Yeah, and of course, that's what our licensees do is they focus on uh, the money that is being billed, the insurance companies and the Medicare and so forth, and getting that money in. Most people don't realize that most doctors don't get but about 60 or 70 percent of the money that they bill for. And that's just because of, uh, you know, uh, antiquated software that they're using, maybe their staff is not motivated to go after that money, et cetera, et cetera. But our licensees, since they charge a percentage of everything that's collected, of course, they're pretty motivated to collect as much as they can. <laughs> yeah, so here's another business piece of information that's that's kind of, that puts doctors in a bad situation. Um, doctors pay a lot of taxes, right? Because they're high earners, so they pay a lot of taxes. And their CPAs will often say, well, that's great. Those rejected claims are great. I uh, will use these as tax deductions, not right. understanding that maybe there are better ways of getting tax deductions. So, you know, these doctors who were worried about how to pay their kids college tuition in the fall, they could be sitting on it right now with their accounts receivables that they could easily access if they just went out and found somebody who could follow up on those rejected insurance claims. Yeah, all it is is just to paying attention to what you've already done. In other words, getting paid for what you've already done. Uh, so, Dr. Vicki, I, I thought I would just kind of uh, let you step through why is it different out there right now, engaging with all right. doctors? Right. Right. So the the COVID pandemic really changed things in ways that none of us could ever have foreseen. Um, really, for the first time, physicians face unprecedented threats to their health. And I've been in medicine long enough. I actually applied to medical school um, when there was this gay plague in the San Francisco Bay Area. And that was the beginning, of course, of the AIDS epidemic. So I became a surgeon as AIDS was just blooming. And there were threats to our health. But we knew how the virus was transmitted. We knew that we didn't want to get needle sticks, right? With this, with this particular disease, we still don't know a whole lot about it. We know that healthcare workers are in fact getting sick, they are dying. And so there's a lot of physicians who are just worried about whether or not they're going to survive it. There are physicians who are uh, sleeping outside of their home because they don't want to bring the virus to their family members. Mm. And, and the unfortunate reality is that many doctors are underinsured, both in terms of life and disability insurance. So doctors are worried about their, their very survival. And so this is a very, very new thing. Um, next slide, Patrick, it talks about, you know, how doctors are really concerned about their income, right? with this flattening the curve, with elective cases being canceled, this is placing healthcare organizations and individual practices in risk. The Mayo Clinic is the biggest employer in the state of Minnesota. They projected about a $3 billion loss for 2020 because these elective cases, that the engine that drives profitability of hospitals, it's gone and we don't know when it's gonna really be back. So they responded by 15% across the board pay cuts and furloughs. And I have to tell you that as a physician, we thought that we had complete financial security. We never imagined that we'd be moving backwards, we'd be getting pay cuts. We never imagined that we would be terminated, but this is really happening. And the American College of Surgeons, like I said, has been providing leadership and, you know, Three pieces of advice that they have now are, first of all, figure out where you are now. Second, remove emotion from the, um, the thought process, like make considered choices. And number three, turn to the experts. And ABS licensees are sort of the cash flow experts who are gonna come in and figure out how to get that money in that doctors so desperately need. Yeah, I mean, that's really all our business is. Uh, you know, I think it was Andrew Carnegie or somebody way back in the 30s or 40s that said, uh, 
he was a very wealthy man. He said, uh, the secret to getting wealthy is find a need and fill it. Uh, and boy, is there a need out there right now? Uh, it's even hurting, of course, uh, the patients because, you know, they're, they're preventing uh, uh, Medicare from making payment cuts that threaten the yeah. patient. Now, Patrick, this is not something that we've talked about, but this is something that you should know. So there's a huge income disparity between primary care physicians and specialists. So like the internal medicine doctors, the pediatricians, even, you know, uh, psychiatrists, they earn significantly less than doctors who do invasive procedures like the surgeons, the cardiologists, the gastroenterologists. Primary care doctors are saying, look, this isn't fair. You know, we work hard, we help patients, we should get paid more. And Medicare finally said, yes, you should. And so they're gonna increase the compensation for primary care, but since there's a total cap on Medicare spending, right now the legislation says that this gap is gonna be filled by lowering the Medicare compensation to the high earn, higher earning specialists. And as Medicare goes, so to go other insurance companies. And so, you know, the specialists who've been hardest hit with the COVID pandemic, because the primary care doctors are already seeing patients, right? They're not putting off elective cases. People need to go in and see them. So there could be an additional seven to 10% decrease in their fees. And the American College of Surgeons has hired a PR company um, to go in and say to Congress, look, this is not a good time to be financially punishing the specialists here. And so this is really active. This is on the table right now. It's unclear how this is going to get played out. But I know most of my friends are really hoping that they're not going to see an additional 7 to 10% pay cut. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, and, and then, then got, physicians are social and virtual. What, what do you mean by that? Right, right. Okay, so doctors go to meetings. I mean, there are things that we need to know about. There are things that we need to learn about. And the primary way that we have been doing this is going to physical meetings. But of course, that's not safe today. And so now more and more meetings are being held, like the Clinical Congress, like the huge annual meeting of the American College of Surgeons. There was just this apologetic note that said, "I'm we're really sorry, but we just can't physically get together 20,000 surgeons. You know, we're gonna do it virtually this year. So doctors are getting much more skilled at engaging virtually, either in telemedicine or with each other. But another thing that's really new is that they are now on social media. They're on Facebook, they're on LinkedIn. And it's possible to connect with them either through organic traffic or even through paid, uh, paid traffic. And so I'm working with people who are successfully acquiring doctor clients digitally. You know, they're just active on LinkedIn. I help them set up digital sales funnels, a series of digital engagement. And this is a great way of getting doctors on your list and then just delivering ongoing value. And, and part of what ABS does is it shares with you the kinds of things that you would want to pass along to doctors to actually have them take the next step with you. Yeah, one of the things that, uh, as you know, Dr. V, we, we offer uh, several ancillary services that our licensees can offer to the doctors. All this is included in their license and training, of course, but one of them is telehealth up there at the top uh, in this illustration here. Telehealth, let me talk about that just for a second because I don't think people realize how big that is. I mean, it, that's been around for years, I guess, hasn't it? It has been. Yeah. It has been, but the problem, even though the technology was not available, the problem was that doctors couldn't figure out how to get paid for delivering these services. So <laughs> there was sort of a, a big barrier to moving forward. Well, with the COVID pandemic, virtually every insurance company is now saying, look, we're going to pay for telehealth now. So yeah. not only is there the technology, but, but there's a path to revenue through the delivery of telemedicine service. And this is something that patients want. My dog just had this weird rash and I was looking around for a televet and I couldn't quite find one. I wish I could have. <laughs> well, you know, that happened to me here recently. I had a little overnight stay in the hospital to do some tests 
And uh, the nurse comes in the next morning and enrolls in this big tray with a big, huge monitor on it. And she says, uh, the doctor would like to, you know, have a visit with you. And I said, okay. And boom, there yeah. he was working from his yeah. home. And it was just fantastic. Uh, this is one of the services that we just introduced recently for our licensees to go out and market to the doctors. And uh, I just interviewed somebody last week. Uh, it's still out there, I think. Let me see if I've got his slides somewhere. Here he is. Uh, Jesus Monroy. That was just last week. Those of you who missed it, you should go back and listen to this interview because uh, Jesus says this is the greatest thing since sliced bread, this, this uh, virus, because it's allowed me now to use telehealth. I mean, tele, I should say just the, the, the technology to connect with doctors. And he's already signed up two doctors during this uh, shutdown time. So uh, it's just a tremendous way for doctors. I think it's the future. In fact, there's all kinds of uh, tools that the doctor can use for what's called remote patient monitoring now. I mean, they can take their uh, blood pressure, their temperature, their weight. I don't know what all these gizmos are showing here, but uh, <laughs> everything can be hooked up now to the patient in their home and then monitored. And that's a big uh, revenue stream for doctors. I don't think people realize, uh, let me just skip to 2020, this is 2014. Uh, look at this chart here. 80% of Americans had at least one chronic disease in 2020. And of Americans, 60% uh, of them had at least two chronic diseases. Now, why that's important, folks, is because uh, there's there's revenue to be had in this uh, for uh, people. Let me just show you this slide. Uh, we're, we're rolling this as a webinar out for our uh, licensees. Dr. Vicki, you introduced the concept of a done-for-you uh, webinar in this case. And... Uh, they're loving these that we've done for them so far. On this one, we're going to show doctors that with only 2,800 patients, 22% uh, uh, of those will be on Medicare on average. 68% will have chronic conditions. Uh, and then for the chronic care management monthly payment from Medicare, the doctor can receive $79 a month. Now, that doesn't sound like much, but if you've got that many patients on it, it can, it can mount up, as you can see, $396,000 a year. So there's revenue out there that doctors are not tapping into because they're maybe uh, just not familiar with the technology that's available. Now, you know, they might have in the past ignored something like this because doctors tend to be a little skeptical, right? They're wondering if this is a dumb doctor deal. But if you're wondering how you're going to pay your kids full college tuition, Doctors are listening to opportunities like this in a much different way because yeah. they, re they yeah. really do have this shortfall that they need right now. It's not just a want. This is something that they need right now. And that's why this is really such a great time to be in this business. Yeah, another licensee I interviewed about, oh, maybe a month ago, he said basically the same thing that Jesus did, that he's been able to connect with doctors uh, without having to, you know, even see them personally. But then when he did set up a meeting with them, they just said, why don't you come in on Saturday? I'll meet you here at my office on Saturday. So there's no patients. Uh, they wore masks. They stayed a little bit apart, of course. And so there are ways to connect with doctors. You just have to know the secrets that, we, that we've that we taught to licensees to do this kind of thing. Uh, look, this is a different slide. It looks kind of the same, but this is remote patient monitoring. Uh, and again, if you look at the numbers on this, uh, it could be a good revenue source for the doctors as well. And Dr. Vig, I think that even a, a nurse uh, can do this for the doctor, the, the tele, telehealth visits, and then just feed back information, especially if they're just remotely monitoring the patients and keeping uh, you know, up with what's going on with them. So you add those two together, uh, CCM uh, and chronic care and, and remote patient monitoring, and there's there's some real revenue here for doctors. Even if a doctor netted half of that, uh, that's $400,000 a year, and he's just got a nurse, uh, you know, in another room or working from home doing this for the doctor. So, right. So he, here's one of the great things about working with doctors. If you're able to bring a solution like this to doctors, um, they tell their buddies about it, right? So they gossip kind of like teenage girls. So once you got a doctor client, think of that as like a stone thrown into a pond. It sends out ripples. So every doctor client that you get can be the potential source of five to 10 new doctor clients 
that will then tell their friends. So once you get sort of known as the go-to guy or gal within targeted groups of doctors, you have the ability to grow your practice exponentially. Oh yeah, we've seen that. Every time I do an interview with a licensee, I'll ask them about their clients and you know they might have 15 clients like Jesus does, but he says, I didn't, uh, I didn't market to most of them. Those were mostly referrals from the first doctor that I signed up. Uh, right. They spread the word, yeah. Thank you. And uh, so uh, this is uh, something that's concerning me because somebody said they couldn't hear at all. So uh, I just want to verify, folks, if you'll find the little uh, hand over there on the control panel uh, and click that hand, it will tell me that you are uh, able to uh, see me. Let me raise, lower all the hands there. And if you'll click that little hand on the control panel, oh, I see a bunch of them raising here. So good. All right. I just want to make sure we were still being heard. I thought maybe we lost it for everybody. And so speaking of these webinars, these are some that you've done, of course, for our licensees or have in the works for our licensees, how to acquire doctor clients in the COVID world. Uh, here's one that you just did recently, didn't you, on LinkedIn. Tell us about Thank LinkedIn. You. you just mentioned it earlier, but I think it's fascinating that, that you can actually connect with doctors on LinkedIn. So I historically a lot of doctors were not on LinkedIn because there's another platform called Doximity. It was built by the same people who built LinkedIn. The thing is that you've got to be a doctor to join. So there's about a million doctors on Doximity. But what I'm finding is that more and more doctors are on LinkedIn. Even like an OBGYN who is the mother of a boy that my son used to play lacrosse with, she sent me an invitation. It's sort of like, wow, she's on LinkedIn. Um, and we're looking at our data and we're really seeing an increase in the number of doctors who are there. And maybe it's because doctors are looking for other opportunities, right? If they've been furloughed, they could be on LinkedIn networking with other people that they might not find on Doximity. But what this means is that a lot of my clients are successfully able to engage doctors on LinkedIn. And um, I, I just, I'm always interested in reaching out to doctors, like, how are you doing? And I'm amazed at how doctors respond to me. You know, I'll just ask them, how are things going? And I'll get three paragraphs sent back. You know, an addiction medicine doctor told me about how things are crazy, you know, with all of the COVID related stresses, there's a huge spike in addiction behavior and fewer resources. And he said, is the world coming to an end? And so, you know, I'm, I'm having like real conversations with doctors there. Now I've got those two little initials after my name, MD. So I can't claim that this is the way it's going to be for you. But if you go to a doctor, with a genuine spirit of service, you know, doctor, thank you for doing the things that you're doing. And then just asking, how are you? How are things going for you? Because chances are good that the thing that's keeping them up at night is a problem that you can solve for them. Yes, and that's what it's all about is uh, if you've got a, a solution to a problem that somebody has in business, then they'll welcome you in with open arms. You just have to show them what that uh, solution is. Uh, one of the things that we did recently uh, was Dr. Vicki and I wrote a book called The New Thriving Medical Practice. We're about to come out with the second edition of this. And as you can see, uh, I'm gonna enlarge this so that I can actually read this to you. But uh, if you can't see that on your screen, it says The New Thriving Medical Practice, how to get off the hamster wheel, work smarter, not harder, generate more revenue and enjoy greater satisfaction in a pandemic world. I, that, that ought to get the attention of some doctors, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, they want to believe that their, their practice can thrive. W one of the persons I interviewed, interviewed recently said uh, that they talked to doctors who've said, look, yes, it's been slow here for the past three months, but I plan to work extra hard and make all of that up income wise by the end of the year. So, you know, they just have to have the right attitude. They have to have the right tools. And this book, by the way, folks, is actually a marketing tool. I don't know if you can see it down there at the bottom. This one is a fake one. I think we have, uh, uh, yeah, Forward by Susan Smith, CMRM. And uh, the reason that's on there is because as an ABS licensee, you'll be able to put your name 
right there as having written the forward. Now you can write your own forward, but most of our licensees just use a generic one that we have. And we're just putting your name on the book so that, uh, well, tell them the advantages of, of, of having their name there on the cover with you. Well, doctors don't want to work with vendors, right? They want to work with the expert. They want to work with somebody with whom they have a real relationship. And, you know, so what is the number one way to show that you're an expert? Well, think about the expression. Oh, that person knows what they're doing. They practically wrote the book on it. Well, here, licensees have the chance of literally putting their name on a book. And our doctor is going to notice forward by, no, what they're going to see is your name associated <laughs> with the physician. And right. it's just a great job for positioning. This is a real door opener. And I think, Patrick, you, you've told me that licensees have had tremendous luck distributing this book. Well, you'll hear that in, uh, in the interview that I did with uh, uh, Dan Elliott uh, about a month ago. He says, Patrick, all I did, I knew that I couldn't go to the doctor's offices. Uh, which I might normally go out and leave a brochure or pick up a business card or something. He says, now I just took this book that had his name on it, of course. And he said, I wrote a little personal note and said, hey, glance through this and let me know if I, if you think I can help you. And that was all he did. And he sent out three of those in the mail to doctors that he had liked to target. And he said he got calls from all three of them. I guess they don't have anything else to do right now, but to you know, read a book. Well, actually, the way we teach you to do the book, we, we teach you to highlight some passages and stick some little sticky notes in there. Anyway, they don't have to read the whole thing. And yet they still called him up and said, you know, some of the things that you marked in the book, I, I do have a problem. I need your help. So he set up meetings with all of them. So yeah, it's been yeah. a tremendous tool. What an idea. I just wished I knew the two people who came up with that idea because they are geniuses, aren't they? <laughs> Well, I think I they must be people committed to helping people in their community be successful. I don't know of any other company that has the help that we give to uh, our licensees. Uh, because when it comes right down to it, a lot of people could train you how to do medical billing, folks. Uh, but knowing how to actually build a profitable business, that's the tough part. And that's what we've been doing for 26 years. Now, tell us about this webinar and why is it that uh, licensees might want to connect with financial advisors? Okay. Oh, so this is great. So you always want to think about how to get bigger leverage, right? So what is leverage? Well, it's getting more work done with the same amount of energy. So if you think about an Allen wrench and an Allen screw, there's a long part of the wrench and a short part. And if you put the short arm of the Allen wrench in the Allen screw, you're gonna have a longer lever arm and you're not gonna have to work as hard to get this screw unscrewed or tightened, right? So you always wanna look for areas where you're gonna have leverage. Now think about this, financial advisors, help doctors build wealth, right? They help doctors put more money in their pocket. And let's say you're a licensee and you're able to increase the amount that doctors collect by 25%, let's say. That means that there's a big chunk of money that financial advisors can invest and help doctors build wealth. So this is sort of a win all around, right? because a lot of financial advisors are paid based on the assets under management. So if you can help them free up $200,000 that they can help doctors invest, that's an extra $20,000, $30,000 for the financial advisor a year. That means that the doctor is moving that much closer to retirement planning. And by the way, about half of doctors report being behind in retirement planning. So I think that you can see that if you went to a financial advisor and said, hey, do you want a simple idea to help accelerate wealth building or retirement planning? Here it is. That financial advisor might be willing to distribute your book, The New Thriving Medical Practice, to their entire list or allow you to come in and share ideas with doctors about how they can be more profitable in their practice, right? That's going to help the financial advisor deliver more value, attract new doctor prospects to them. 
and deliver more value, get better results for their existing clients. So this is kind of a win all around. So I think financial advisors are great power partners. They're easy to find. You just Google financial advisor for doctors and then your town, they're easy to find. Yeah, so we just kind of pulled back the curtain there and showed people one of the ways, one of a dozen different ways that we've come up with to help them to connect with people who know doctors. Think about it, folks. You don't have to, you may not know a doctor that needs help, but those financial advisors are working with doctors and they know the doctors and can introduce you. So that can all be done virtually too. You don't have to ever leave your okay. home once you make those connections. So that's part of what we teach uh, in our training is to how to really get connected with those people. Okay, so I've got some other questions coming in here. And folks, if you're not typing in questions, this is your opportunity to ask a medical doctor who's been there, done that, and actually, well, you outsourced your billing, didn't you? I did. You I did. And not at first. When I got out of residency and I joined a partner, he had this office manager who was doing like everything except the operating, she said. And not too long after I joined the practice, she quit. And it was just a nightmare because what that meant was that cash flow stopped. We didn't have anyone doing billing. My, um, my partner's wife said, how hard can this be? Why don't I just take some time for my tennis lessons and come in and do it? And oh. it was just a, a complete mess. You know, instead of taking money out of the practice, I had to make an owner investment to pay the quarterly taxes. It was just a wreck. I had an opportunity to sort of break out at a separate hospital because they had this multidisciplinary breast clinic. And one of my first decisions was that I was going to outsource my billing. I didn't want, you know, my revenue to be dependent on one person who could possibly quit. I, you know, this was just too important. So yes, after my first year in practice, I, I was a complete believer in outsourcing billing. <laughs> yeah, and, and so folks, this is your chance to, to, to talk to a doctor here on this webinar. So type your questions in there and I'll get to them as they're typed in. This is live for right now. So you have the opportunity to type in anything you want to and we'll try to get to all those questions. Uh, one of them and here, I'll answer uh, anything. Ask your most embarrassing question. Go for it. <laughs> this is your big chance. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I, th I think a lot of people still wonder, uh, are there doctors out there, you know, uh, wh what is my potential uh, client list? And I, so I'm putting it on the screen. I know you can't read this. This is way too small, but I wanted to just show you the volume. You can You can download these slides, by the way, in the handout section. Uh, I put the myth book in there too. Thank you, Dr. Vicki, for allowing me to do that. Uh, so you can yeah. download both of those items in the handout section. But uh, you'll, when you when you get the slide deck, blow that up where you can read that. Those are all the different types of specialties that you can do billing for. And there's just probably more than you think out there uh, when it comes to the variety that's there. Okay, so uh, Dr. Vicki, let me ask you this. Uh, you've also done some webinars in the past, for example, this one called The 10 Laws of Physician Engagement. I remember the first time I saw this, I just thought this could only come from the brain of a doctor who's been there and done that. And I guess you were called on by different vendors when you were out there too, huh? So you know what works I and what doesn't work. I was, but I'll tell you when I really learned this. It's when I made my transition from being a practicing surgeon to being a consultant, an author and a speaker and a coach. And I really struggled a lot. Um, I, you know, just went through my savings. I hired coaches and mentors. I've invested more in my sales and marketing training than I actually have in medical school. And what I really came to understand through that process is that I, as a doctor, was wired differently than business-minded people. And I got that insight when I was over in Europe speaking. I went to plug in my laptop and realized you can't do that directly because Europe is wired differently than the US. And you need an adapter to make it happen. And I thought, is that my problem? Is that I, as a doctor, am wired differently than my business-minded buyer? 
And maybe what I needed was this adapter. So once I created the adapter between the world of business and the world of medicine, I got much different results. I talked with a lot of people who struggled trying to sell products or services to doctors. And I think for them, they struggle for the same reason that I struggled. Um, they just don't understand how their buyers are wired. So like, here's my water, right? If I let go, I know what's going to happen because the law of gravity takes over. This is going to fall to the ground. It's Things are usually going to fall to the ground. If I were holding helium balloons, you know, that would be the exception. That would go up. But once you know the law of gravity and you can predict what your outcome is most likely to be, it gives you some guidance for how you conduct yourself. Well, these 10 laws are kind of like the laws of gravity. And in general, if you align your marketing message and the way that you approach doctors, um, you're gonna get better results. Conversely, if you're struggling, what I'll often do with my coaching client is take out the 10 laws. Okay, which, which of these laws is being violated? How can we tweak it? And in general, when you align your behaviors with the 10 laws, you're really gonna get a different result. And sometimes it's just a little teeny weeny tweak, like using the doctor title instead of a doctor's first name. That, that's a big tweak, but an important tweak. And I'm sure that nobody here would um, default to a doctor's first name when they just meet a doctor. You can lose the sale at hello that way. Oh yeah, I can imagine. Well, here's a couple of questions. They're kind of connected here. So I'm gonna start with Norma's. She says, uh, approximately what percentage of doctors outsource their billing? Not enough is the answer. Uh, so it, it, there's a wide variation and I think the most important thing to remember right now is that things the way that used to be done, everything's in turmoil right now. So I think 100% of doctors are open to taking a look at their process and reinventing the way that they do things. So even if a doctor has outsourced their billing in the past, it could be that they're not happy with the vendor. Uh, what is your experience with the licensees, Patrick? Would you agree with that, that everyone's taking a look at how things are working? I, I get that all the time, that license, I, I mean, I, I was surprised when we first started this business teaching people that most of the doctors that were being signed up had already outsourced to some other company, but that company was using outdated technology and were not collecting what the doctor thought they should be. They weren't giving the doctor reports in real time and so forth. So with our system, of course, being cloud-based, you can give a login to the doctor where they can go in and actually see the status of their claims at any time from anywhere in the world that has an internet connection. Uh, but that, that's, that's true that I would say the majority of our licensees are seeing that doctors that already outsource are interested in talking to them, maybe just to compare you know, what, what they can do for them that this other company can't do. Uh, but the ones that are doing the billing uh, themselves inside their own office, of course, uh, they, of course, don't have any idea of what's going on. <laughs> All right. So I've got a client over in Singapore. She's a financial advisor, and she wants to work with doctors there. And I just asked her, like, who's your competition? And she said, well, in Singapore, it's the banks. And I asked her, well, what? how are you different from banks? And she said, well, in a bank, there's just a nameless person who's going to move on. With me, they've got a relationship. And so I think that with licensees, ABS licensees, really their true value is that they want to work with like a real person. Like you're going to build a relationship. Patrick, I remember once I was speaking with one of your licensees and the question came up about, well, what about the competition? Um, you know, what if somebody else just comes in with, you know, a new or cheaper service? She said, I'm not worried about it. I know with my clients, nobody else is going to get in the door because I've got this solid relationship with them. You know, it's more than just billing. They trust me, they know me, and they're not going anywhere. Well, and that's why with all the other services that our licensees can offer, they can actually become a partner with a doctor 
uh, on all aspects of their revenue. They're not just medical billers, they're revenue managers. And that's why they're certified uh, at the end of their training as a medical revenue manager. Hey, Chris says, what? who currently does the doctor's billing? Uh, is it the people in the office that they don't need anymore or, or do most already uh, currently outsource their billing? Well, uh, we've actually found it, Chris and Norma, about half and half. So you'll find a lot of doctors are using their own staff, but if they are, those staff don't have any motivation at all, do they, Dr. Biggie? They, they're, yeah. they're just there to do a job and if, if whether they collect the money or not just doesn't really you know, count towards uh, their income. you know. And so there's no motivation there. Uh, but uh, they, they, they have a lot of uh, problems with their staff. There's a lot of turnover. And as Dr. Bickey said earlier, sometimes the doctor's spouse even takes that over and uh, probably does as good a job as anybody. But the point is, they still don't have that the tools, the technology that we have for our licensees to be able to collect. Folks, we, we collect up to 98% of all the money that's due to the doctor. And as I said earlier, some doctors are only collecting about 70%. So that's money just there on the table for the taking that our licensees come in and collect for the doctor. And th those, those can mount up. Uh, Dr. Vicky, we've run into doctors that have a million dollars in AR, you know, accounts receivable that they haven't collected. So it, it, it's crazy. And, you know, the funny thing is, is that. I don't, I don't know any doctors that do their own taxes, like with H&R Black or whatever. They want to go to the experts for taxes. But if you look at the financial consequences of how you manage accounts receivables, it makes it kind of crazy not to outsource billing. I mean, ABS licensees do this all day, every day. They they know what the standards are, right? They know how not to be billing outliers so that a doctor isn't vulnerable to be audited or increased risk for being audited. There's just so much money on the line that I just, I don't think it makes good sense to you know, have somebody who spends a couple hours a week doing in-house billing when you know, somebody else could do it with so much more skill and get such better outcomes. Well, I think that's why the doctors that do outsource have decided that very thing that, hey, I could have it done in house, but it's probably going to cost me more money. I mean, there's hidden costs for having your own staff do all that. Besides, they've got a dozen other things that they're trying to juggle. So they don't really focus on it uh, like they should to be able to collect every dime that's out there. That's why doctors don't mind paying our licensees, uh, you know, six to eight percent, sometimes more to collect that money because uh, it's like, okay, I don't mind giving up a little percentage as long as I get a whole lot more money in. <laughs> uh, exactly. Let's see, Queen, Queen's asking, uh, does a physician have to have the electronic medical record that ABS offers? Uh, no, they don't have to use ours. We can connect uh, our system directly to their EMR or EHR that they're using now, Queen. And uh, that's all a matter of just, uh, you know, uh, linking that through programming. So we do that uh, if they wanna just stick with their own. Now, after they see the advantages of our system, because we give them a free demo of that, some of them immediately just switch because they would much rather use something that's up to date, modern, and has all the bells and whistles that ours does. Ours were, our, our whole system was invented, uh, designed by two doctors uh, over 20 years ago. Uh, and so they they knew what they needed in an EHR, and uh, it's just grown from there. These are great questions coming in, aren't they? Yeah, they sure are. Well, Dr. Vicki, uh, I'm going to let you go because I do have to wrap up here with a few other things. Thank you so much. Is there anything you want to share uh, before you go with everybody on the webinar? Well, I had just wanted to recognize your vision for being here. You know, I'm a serial entrepreneur, so I'm always looking at opportunities. And I know what I look for. You know, I want to make sure that there's a market. I want to make sure that there's really a path to sales and a path to success. And I think that you're going to find that, especially here in this time of COVID pandemic, 
Um, I hope that this is one of your top three to five opportunities that you're looking into. Because like I said, I think it, it checks all the boxes. You know, doctors are not gonna be outsourced to China. They're not gonna disappear. We have an ongoing need for doctors. Uh, doctors have acute pain right now and an ABS licensee helps doctors alleviate that pain. Plus, you know, you're signing up for an organization who's gonna show you step by step how to actually acquire doctor clients and serve it and they're people of integrity. So um, I'm so glad that you're here learning about it. Uh, if you do decide to become a licensee, I will look forward to working with you and supporting your success. So Patrick, thanks for the invitation to share some of these ideas today. Good, well, we're here. If you need anything, let us know, Dr. Vicki, and we appreciate you being a partner with uh, our licensees in their business. It is my great pleasure. Bye-bye, all. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Now, folks, I've got the certificate up there that you get once you've gone through our training. We have uh, online live training with a real live instructor uh, who is one of our licensees, by the way. They're running their own business, so it's not just theory. It's not just book learning. This is taught by somebody who really is out there and has built a very, very profitable, successful business. So there's the certificate you get. By the way, we have a money back guarantee. If you haven't heard about that, I, I don't know of anybody that does this. Folks, there, there is no other company in America that I know that sells a franchise or business opportunity licensing package like we have that offers 100% money back guarantee. You need to get a copy of our agreement and read what that says. There's no weasel words in it. It's pretty straightforward. If you don't like what you see, you get your money back. If you want to get involved in our business, you have to get our research guide. Now, folks, this is a PDF, uh, eight and a half by 11. It's got over 50 pages of information, a lot of information that's not on our website. Uh, so uh, just use the email address you see there on the screen or the phone number. If you're not sure who your ABS rep is, it's the person who sent you the invite to this webinar. You can get back with them and say, hey, I want your research guide. Then browse our YouTube channel. Yes, we have a, our own channel out there on YouTube. We've got hundreds of videos that you can watch if you wanna know more about our business, and especially if you wanna hear from some of our existing licensees. I've done over 150 interviews with our licensees over the years that you're welcome to uh, watch and listen to how they built their business. Then ask your ABS rep for an owner reference list. That's right, we have licensees who are willing to take your phone call and talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. These are people who just are grateful that they have built a, a profitable business with our help and are willing to take uh, your phone calls. We'll send you that list as well. Then if you haven't seen our software, since it doesn't come on a CD, it's a, it's a cloud-based system, ask your ABS rep for a live demo and we'll take you through one-on-one -on -one using technology like we're using today and show you our cloud-based system actually live uh, on the internet and how it works. You'll be amazed at how advanced it is way beyond all the other companies out there that are using software that's antiquated, really antiquated. Okay, and then last but not least, reserve your spot for your first live online training session. Now I'll go back to that slide there with the email and the phone number, but for now, let me talk about this for a moment because it's done using uh, the technology that Log Me In uh, Corporation uses, uh, like this one, GoToWebinar. And we actually hook up with you through video, and using slides, we will step you through exactly what you need. We have eight modules. This is gonna take you about eight to uh, 15 hours of training live. This live training is with someone who is, again, uh, one of our uh, certified instructors, and there's eight different modules that you'll go through. That uh, phone number that you see there is for you to call right now if you want to, and just ask who my rep is, uh, and you can ask for uh, the person that's connected you uh, with us, and you can also email us there if you want to, and just say, hey, who is my rep? I don't know who it is, if you're not sure, but go back to the email that we sent you and get that.